Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, sitting here at my cluttered desk in my cluttered office, coming to you, praying that you're having a fantastic day, and I'm excited about the service tonight. Now we're three, four, maybe five weeks into this new, never to be called normal uh, situation that we're dealing with here as we grapple uh, with the coronavirus and the responses to the virus. And we see that there's chaos going on in our country. There are governors who are ready to open up their states uh, to phase it in. There is uh, the, 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 the government, the federal government, the pro the president's fade in program. Uh, and then there are other governors who are saying, no, we can't open up. All these things are going on. I tell you, these are exciting times. I'm glad that I'm anchored in Jesus, washed in the blood of the lamb. And I am not doubting about the way. And my friends, if you are paying attention to the word of God, neither are you. You know that the God of the Bible has us. I'm like you. I'm praying. I'm looking forward to the time when we can all gather together again in the house of God where, you know, I'll be honest with you, I miss some of the bad Raleigh traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I never thought I'd say that. But uh, sooner or later, we're going to be uh, 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 back and, uh, and we'll have to, my friends, because this situation that we're in right now is not sustainable. You can't keep the country on lockdown forever. The, the great American economy will, cl uh, will, 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 will crash. And if you think uh, the coronavirus uh, is a problem, let the economy crash. This virus will look like a picnic by comparison. So we're looking to God. We're looking to God. We're looking to the Lord. We're praying to him. We're seeking his face. We are augmenting our behavior. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And here's the one sometime we like to omit and turn from their wicked ways. Then and not before then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal the land. We need to pray that God would heal the land, but the land needs to turn from its wicked ways or at least the believers in the land. Because the prayer is specific. If my people who are called by my name. So the saints of God must seek the Lord as never before. And I believe as we seek him, he will bless us. And uh, by the way, before I go off, you know, I, I, I'm hearing from many of you and thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your comments. And one of the recurring questions, especially from some of our new viewers, is what's the deal with the flag? There's the flag hanging here over my uh, left shoulder. It says Jesus pride. And this flag, my friends, I proudly display. As a matter of fact, we have a flag, a, a big one in the sanctuary that we display. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, we have several rainbow flags. Uh, two posters with rainbows and, and a flag with the rainbow that we display in our sanctuary. One of the uh, 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 posters with a flag that's displayed, it, it is an emerald rainbow, and that represents the rainbow that we're going to see in heaven that's over the throne of God. And then there is uh, the uh, seven colored rainbow that is displayed that, that, that's similar to this one in our sanctuary. And, and it talks about what the promise that God made that he would never destroy the earth again with water. The rainbow is an assurance to us of God's mercy, and it is a reminder to God of his mercy. He promised that he would never destroy the earth again with water. Thank you, Lord, for keeping uh, your promise. Amen. Floods come, floods go, but look at how the Lord has taken care of us. And also, uh, you know, June, June in America is Homosexual Pride Month. Well, 
We've decided here at the upper room that we're not going to give them the month of June, that we will not sit idly by and allow a symbol of God's grace, God's love and God's mercy to become synonymous with a lifestyle that the Bible clearly condemns. The word that the Bible used is abomination, strange flesh. Oh, yeah, uh, words like abusers of themselves with mankind. Someone said to me one time, uh, uh, Bishop Wooden, the word homosexual doesn't appear, appear in the Bible anywhere. And that's because, my friend, long before the word homosexual was coined, before that word was uh, created, made up, before the word was used, uh, uh, hundreds of years before that word ever became introduced to the lexicon of the human vocabulary, the Bible was already written. But there are multitudes of terms in the Bible that describes the act. So whether you call the act homosexuality, lesbianism, whether you call it uh, the gay lifestyle, I don't call it that. Whatever word you choose to, to use, it describes a lifestyle that God declared to be wrong and that people can be delivered from it uh, through the love of Jesus Christ. And uh, I know what I'm saying now is not politically correct. And it does. And that it flies in the face of much of what is being said now. But you know what? Uh, as I heard one powerful preacher preach one time, he asked the question and I'm asking the same question. When did God change his mind? <laughs> And the answer is, he hasn't. He won't. He said, I am the Lord thy God. I change if not. So that's why the flag is there. We have it proudly displayed to say that we have Jesus pride. We're proud of Christ. We're proud to be saved. And, and we want those the beautiful colors of the rainbow to be synonymous. When you see the rainbow, you think about Jesus. When you see the rainbow, you think about God's love grace and mercy. Now I am fired up and uh, I'm fired up about tonight. Tonight's message, my friends, uh, I, I can hardly wait to, to, to deliver it. That's something that God has dealt with me about something that he wanted me to share with you. And, and tonight we're going to have a, a mighty time of teaching and in the word of the Lord. I, I want to tell you, come and join me here and, and you, you can join me, but you just can't mm, join me in person. I, I'd forgotten it for a moment. Brother Gary, I was getting ready to tell him, meet me right here at the upper room church of God in Christ. Well, meet me via, uh, YouTube, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, whatever the various outlets are, we're working so hard here. Thank you for your patience. We're working hard here to make the adjustments that are necessary while we're going through uh, this time of great constitutional overreach. Yes, that's what I believe it is. And I understand that uh, we want to be kept safe. We want to, we want to, uh, uh, do all the things that uh, uh, make for uh, our being safe, but uh, we still have rights. We still have rights. I see on television now where people are being criticized uh, by talking heads just for making their voices heard. Isn't it amazing, my friends, that the very same people who just a few days ago when government uh, separation of church and state when keeping the government uh, a, a, away from the church and keeping the church out of the government and keeping the church out of laws being made. And we, there's a separation of church and state. If I've been told one time, one time I've been told a thousand times, wouldn't you got to understand you got to separate your religion from your politics. We got to separate the church from the state. You got to keep them separate. Well, now the same voices who were telling us to separate them. Now these same people are saying when the state, the government, tells the church 
to shut down. We've got to be good little citizens and we've got to obey the government and we've got to shut down and not only shut down, but shut up, shut down and shut up about it only because it, it fits the agenda of, of certain ones who are in the position of power. This is a power grab, my friends. But I'll tell you what, the God of the Bible, he has the power. He's in charge and he's going to keep us. I'm not a coronavirus denier. I know that we have a crisis going on in our nation, but I will never, I will never Agree with those who believe that the gathering of the saints, that the saints of God coming together, that saints of God praying to the God of the Bible is non-essential. And then you keep open vape stores and, and uh, abortion clinics and ABC stores like these things are going to contribute to getting rid of the coronavirus. Uh, I believe one of the greatest things uh, that is missing now is the gathering of the saints and calling on the name of the Lord. And then that's just me. That's just me. And this is not a subtle way of my saying that we're going to change anything that we're doing right now. We, 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 we're in this. This is where it is. But I will never submit to it. I'll never call it the new normal. I understand those who see the wisdom of it. I see wisdom in saints praying and calling on the name of Jesus. Well, what about the saints who have died? Saints have always died. All men die. Believers have died standing on the faith down through the years. Have you, ever, have you not ever read, but to live is Christ, but to die is gain. And my friends, I'm praying for all of those who have lost loved ones, but you can't let the fear of death. You can't let the fear of death stop you from obeying God. Jesus said this, and I'm, I'm closing. You know, we get to preaching. I just want, I, this is my way of telling you to tune in tonight. But Jesus said this, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not depart from it. Gates of hell, gates of hell. This is not just merely ruling demon forces, but gates of hell is an idiom for death, for martyrs. Jesus was saying no matter how many of us you try to kill, no matter how many martyrs, how many believers may lose their lives, the gates of hell shall not prevail against Christ's church. So my friends, I'm excited tonight. We're going to teach the word of the Lord to you. Tune in and, uh, and share it. Let the people know that we're here. And you know, when I preach now, I don't, I don't uh, interrupt my sermons and inundate them with give me some hand claps, give me some love, give me some likes, even though we want those things. Uh, I, I, I think maybe, I, I really think that what you want me doing out there when you tune in, you want me preaching. You want me preaching the word of the Lord, teaching the word of the Lord, giving you the word of the Lord, and, and, and you'll give me the likes and the amens and all of that. So uh, let us continue to work together. Pray for Brother Wooden, and I look forward to seeing you tonight. Prayer starts at 7.30. 7.30, we're going to be on the altar praying, uh, in the church praying, and, uh, and we're going to have a little praise and worship. Then they're going to turn it over to me, and we're going to teach the word of the Lord. Thank you, and I'll see you tonight for Bible study. <laughs> That's right, Bible study. God bless.